It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and it's time for Maker's Monday. Uh, today I'm going to construct a necklace um, using these components that came from a stretchy bracelet. There were, I don't know, how many? Six or so in the... Uh, the bracelet and was overstretched. I'm just going to use one of them actually because it's uh, got double uh, holes on the back I thought I would make a double strand necklace. So I've had to assemble all my parts. I've decided I'm going to uh, use these beads um, uh, in graduated sizes these were rescued from a, an earlier jewelry jar. I'm going to use these uh, little beads as spacers. There's a variation in color, but that's always nice. Um, I have copper chain for an extender uh, and a lobster claw clasp in copper. And all my uh, wire guardians, crimp covers, and so on. Um, and I'm using, I think I'm going to use a 22 inch and, um, wire. I think I may cut 22, I think I cut 22 and 24. Um, and so we'll start with the clasp. And that's always the most challenging part. Um, you would think you would start it the other way around. Um, but we need to start here. Okay, so I got my clasp, I got my ring. I'm going to use Wire Guardian. Where are they? Some people uh, use different components. I find I like Wire Guardians, they are my friend. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is get the uh, crimp and the wire guardian on. It's hard to see the crimp pole when you do it working with the camera. So I hope you don't mind the, uh, the light is on. So put my wire through the guardian. through the crimp bead. There. Pull that tight. I'm going to put it a little bit longer. So this bit of wire is going to go down through the beads. I'm just going to switch hands. Here's my crimper. So the first thing I have to do is flatten the crimp. It doesn't feel like it flattened it. Oh yeah, there it did. So the fact that it's got a, a channel like that for the two wires and then just press it together. Yay, so there's one done. Let's do the other wire since that one worked uh, so well. On with the crimp, on with the wire guardian. Some people use uh, French wire, which is um, can be in sterling or gold or gold filled. I like using the uh, multi-strand coated wires and the guardians. They're a little less expensive. But they're also uh, what I'm comfortable with. Some people use the clamshells. And I find clamshells work well if you are stringing, like with actual cord, silk, or like a, a cotton, like a pearl stringing cord. 
but I have found that with wire, depending on how you um, secure, oops, okay, so with this uh, setup I seem to be having some trouble with my crimps tonight. I think it's just because I'm not used to how they look under the camera and getting everything lined up properly. So I apologize for fumbling around here a little bit. Good thing that crimps are very inexpensive because I find I use uh, use extras getting things right. Okay, wire crimp pliers. So. Let's get it in there. Didn't quite pull it as tight as I would have liked. There. So I've got a good crimp on it? Oh yeah. And we flatten it. There we go. Okay, so two wires ready to go. Let's uh, turn off the flash and bring up the camera to where all the supplies are and we can start stringing. Now, I am going to have to guesstimate here how many beads I'm going to need. I can't just start at the center and work out. Well, I could. I could half string and, and see where it goes. So I have um, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight of that size. Okay, I'm gonna, then I have to go to the next size up. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, fourteen, sixteen. Okay, and then I think I'm going to go to even, well, no, I better use these up, two, four, oh good, two, and four, and then I'm going to go to slightly smaller ones. So let's see how many we have these and let's hope that this gets us the right amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, two, four, Six, eight, ten, twelve, two, four, six, two, four, six. Alrighty. 
I'm going to start with a spacer bead and then just work my way up. So this is what it's going to look like um, as we go along. So I'm going to uh, do a half, do one half, and then come back. And okay, so here are my various beads laid out, um, my spacers. Uh, I've determined that I like these um, small seed beads as spacers to go with the smaller beads, and so this is my center focal and these have got a little moved around but this is what I've determined that's gonna be with my focal here in the center that's going to be 24 inches which is very long But I think I'm going to try it. When I get to the back here, I'm going to uh, put through the wire and then I'm going to string a whole bunch of these little seed beads in the back so that the wire is covered. So it's going to take um, probably 16 or so of these. So I'll uh, string them and come right back. Okay, so I'm still a few short, probably two or three. So here we go. Through the other side. See how that fits. Okay, great. And then I'll put a bead on the other side, and then it's a matter of stringing the opposite side or stringing the other side in the opposite direction. So I'll do that and then come right back. So here we are uh, getting started on the second half. So we've got the spacers between the two large beads just as the opposite side and we've got the different spacers between the four uh, smaller beads and then I just have to move on to the spacers between the um, the next size beads and there's what 12 of those I think and then the very small ones at the end so I'll um, tune you in for each section as we go along so here we are, uh, we're almost finished the second side. We've got the two large, the four smaller. Those are actually 20 of the smallest of the faceted crystals. And then the end of this, the last few inches are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of the number eight seed beads separated by number two number 11 so that's all we have left to do and i'll uh, do that and then i'll be right back and we're back here's the second half this actually goes up that way eventually um so here's the second half of the uh clasp so all i have left to do on this side you'll notice i have a little bit of a the difference here I have a large single bead large and then three um, because that's what I did at the other side and there was no way I was taking it out at this point and redoing it the whole thing so I made it a design feature 
focus camera. There we go. Feed it on the other side. Time to put on the crimp and the other wire. And I'll be right back for the second half. Okay, so I've um, strung the crimp, the wire guardian, put the wire through, and I've put it down all through these beads, and I've snugged it tight, but not too tight. Um, and you want the wire to go back through some of the beads because it actually helps um, protect. You don't end up with the, the wire being too short. So let's see if I can crimp this nicely on camera. I don't think it's going to... Oh, maybe it is. Okay, so that's where we... Oops, I just broke a bead. Okay. Let me stop and go back and put a new bead on so that it matches on both sides. My crimp is already crimped, even though I broke a bead. So I'm going to just leave it the way it is. It's going to be slightly lopsided, but I don't think anybody's going to notice. There we go. That's nicely closed, folded over, and I will trim this wire here. And I will. Okay, here we go. I got so much in the background. I'm not for sure if it's going to focus. Okay, so there's my crimp. Here's my crimp cover. It looks like a little, sort of like a little seashell. And you can, see, or, or sort of a U shape. And the beauty of these is you can use your crimp pliers. They're just the right sort of shape. Get it in there. There we go. Okay, so it goes out of focus when I go to do that. But there we go. Okay, so there's my crimp cover, not quite fully closed, and I'm just gonna, those are my cutters, problems when some of them are the same, are blue, and blue handles, okay, I'm gonna do it from this side, so you can just sort of see it just gently closes like that, and it's in a nice round bead shape, I can still do a little more, uh, Crimping, I can also, I tend to like to close these a little bit there, tighter. There we go. And I'll just get that a little rounder. There's one end done. Get my other crimp cover. Put, and you can see why it doesn't matter what color the crimp was because it just totally covers it. Um, use my crimping pliers to just gently, gently, gently close that. You can use other pliers too, but I find that these work really well because they have that round um, section in there. I might close it a little tighter off camera. We'll see, go like that. And I also like to close the wire guardian a little tighter here. There. Good. Well, we're in the home stretch. I've uh, done the second uh, strand. What I did was I put a ring. Um, here at the end so that both of the uh, wire guardians and wire ends are attached and and then pull this tight to make sure that it hangs properly spaced it's kind of hard to show it here but uh, it, it is the right length now, and you can see that it's a little, just a little different at the center. Um, I made it a little bit, one shorter here, I think, and the rest is all identical as we go across. So I'm just filling in the back, and then I'll do the other side, and I'll come back with the uh, finished length before I put the clasp on. Hello, it's Pat Hood from Pat Passions and Pastimes. And I'm back with the progress on this necklace. Now you may remember this necklace being a little bit longer when I last left due 
I was thinking I'd make the longest piece um, 24 and then the shorter piece 22 and actually they ended up um, too long and so I took it down to 20 inches on the outside and slightly smaller on the inside and if I pick it up I haven't quite finished it as you can see so when there we go so that's how it hangs when the uh, when the two ends are joined I have um, rings uh, I have crimp covers that I have to put on still um, and I'm debating as to how I will join these uh, there's a lot of play meaning they move around a lot when I put this just in a ring so ideally you would have a two bar connector here and so I'm going to look uh, at how I will figure that out but I think it might end up being um, a couple of small rings to bring these close together and then some chain a little bit of change for, for an extender and then the lobster claw clasp so I think that this was successful so from a bracelet that had um, all of these um, lovely focals, so that's all they were. I've made a necklace. I will make a bracelet with one of these focals and the matching beads. And then I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do after that. Um, I certainly could make more bracelets uh, of this color. Or I could also, I think, go into some lighter tones, into some chain. Um, really there's a, a lot of variety that we can have with these so if you uh, like how this project uh, is turning out uh, I'll put a, a finished hanging version of at the very end of the video but if you like how it's turning out give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment and uh, I hope you return for my next video thanks very much it's making Mondays from Pat Hood and passions and pastimes Hello, it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I'm back with the final necklace that I have been making. I've uh, added the clasp and actually um, an extender chain. Um, I'm not sure why the wire is curving like this, but I think once I've had it hang on a mannequin for a little while, it should be fine. I think it, it looks like the curve of the wire on the spool. I've never had that happen before. I've also had time using, again, the same kind of focal and the same kind of uh, setup to make a bracelet to match the necklace. Whoops. Like this. And the bracelet has a magnetic clasp. So that makes it really easy to put on. Um, and... Uh, doesn't look as great on the table, but so there's the final roundup of the uh, the necklace and the bracelet, and I'll be using some of these beads to make uh, earrings. I think these might be a little too weighty, um, though they are nice. They would look really dramatic in a pair of earrings. But this um, set, I think, dressy. It could go with casual. Couldn't you see this with jeans, a pair of cowboy boots, a nice. Uh, colored shirt. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video from Pat Hood at Passions and Pastimes. Thank you very much for watching.